What is happening, y'all? Welcome on back. Let's continue. The Shadow Lady. Yo, this fuck it. This dude. And she's just like blessed in his mind or something, isn't she? That's what you get. That bastard. of the lake. Oh, wow, it's weird. It's like the, the lady was dragging Alice down into the darkness. the audio again. Wonder who Diving Man is. Looks like something out of Bioshock. I'm hunted by the law. Sheriff, wake's running. I'm giving chase. Are you seriously telling me that writer just took out my deputies? A thriller I supposedly wrote is coming true. The genre of the story seems to be shifting. <sighs> It's turning into a horror story. I was told that Alice had been kidnapped, but that was a lie. We don't have his wife. We don't know where she is. Her purported kidnapper was eaten up by the dark presence before it attacked me. The truth. Alan, shh, baby. It was just a nightmare. Alice. There you go. Hartman, I fell. I had to give you a sedative. Don't fight it. I... You went through another rough period. What? Right now, it's very important that you stay calm. We don't want you to have another episode. You're a patient at my clinic. Have been for a while now. The shock of your wife's death triggered a mental illness. No, what? You're, you lie. You're suffering from various uh, symptoms of undifferentiated schizophrenia. Bastard. It's okay, okay Alan. Just, Just let, let go. 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 That was just a dream, I'm guessing. I felt groggy. Whatever Hartman had bumped in me was making me numb. I felt like this was happening to someone else. Someone I was watching on television. I couldn't think. Couldn't focus. Wait, was that, that that was real? The door was locked. I was a prisoner here. Emerson. Yeah, I think we are. Wow. Well, the good news is, according to the little the review guy at a buddy shot me, there's no more copyright music until episode six, which is good like the evening, end of the game. Alan. Are we feeling better now? Feeling calm? Yeah. I see you brought your pet gorilla with you. So sure, I'm calm. I get the message, loud and clear. Quite right. That's the spirit? You're being very brave, Alan. I understand you're confused. I would be more concerned if you weren't suspicious of me. I don't blame you for it. Big of you. Now, why don't you come with me? We'll reacquaint you with my clinic and go over everything you might have forgotten. Little walk and some fresh air? Yes, it will do you good. What happened to the cops and the darkness? Like. This corridor is for patients. 
Most of them aren't here right now. Jack took them out for a fishing trip. Except for the ones who are particularly vulnerable, of course. I encourage creativity as a part of the recovery process here at Cauldron Lake Lodge. I specialize in treating artists. I bet you do. Splendid, Alan. I honestly believe we can get this thing under control if we work together. This way, Alan. Now, Alan, from past experience with you, I know I need to get right into the heart of the matter as quickly as I can after an episode. So I'm just going to say this. Alice is dead. No. You're in a very vulnerable state until you understand and accept this. Alice drowned. And you couldn't face that. You're suffering from hallucinations, paranoid delusions, unusual thinking, an obsession about light and darkness, a feeling that everything revolves around you, your thoughts and dreams. Your mind has constructed an elaborate fantasy scenario in which your writings are affecting reality. She has been kidnapped and supernatural forces of darkness are trying to stop you. I mean, when he says it like this, it all does sound ready pretty loopy. Shot, so I went along with it. He had to be lying. But under the influence of the drug he had given me, I had to fight not to believe his words. It's all in your head. You've been making it up. Apart from the tragic accident with your wife, no one has been killed. Your delusions are just a manifestation of your subconscious mind trying to protect you from the too painful truth. Unless we fight the fantasy, it will return. I know the instinct is to resist me, but think about it. Doesn't this make far more sense than the insane supernatural conspiracy you have concocted in your mind? You're a skeptic by nature, Alan. We both know this. Everything can be explained logically. Yeah, I'd be asking, like, what about the cops? What about the FBI agent that wanted me? Never get tired of this view. Very inspiring, isn't it? Cauldron Lake spread below us. I could see Mirror Peak on the other side of the lake. I thought I could make out the spot where Diver's Isle had been when I arrived with Alice. Now there was nothing but waves. It seems there's a storm coming. Funny, I don't recall there being a mention of that in the weather forecast. Well, no matter. This way, follow me. Alan, what I'm telling you is good news. Right now, we're in control. Every time you have a relapse, it gets more and more difficult to resurface from the dark depths of your imagination. Not surprising, considering your profession. Imagination is what you work with. After all your nightmares, this should come as an immense relief to you. If it doesn't, why is that? Because I'm lying? Or because you don't want to admit that you're not well? It's very natural for you to think of me as your enemy. It's part of the illness. I let him talk. After all, Hartman I'm obviously the one loved his own voice. Out of the his words echoed madly inside my head. But I, can't I dug my nails into the myself. palms of my hands to stay focused. You need to work with me. Once you accept that, we can begin the journey towards your recovery. Come along. Let's go inside. Here's the entrance to the office wing. That's for staff only. You were impressed by my trophies when you first arrived scary, here. Scary, I do love to scary. hunt. The great outdoors, man oh, yeah. versus nature. It's wonderful stuff. <laughs> Pretty damn wonderful, yeah. <laughs> this dude is bonkers. <laughs> Emerson. I'm a real bad dream, mister. You should be afraid of me. Don't want to run into me in the night, that's for sure. Please, Emerson. Mr. Wake is confused enough as it is. Yeah, you'd like me to go away so you won't be scared. But you can't just decide what kind of dream you have or when you have it. Emerson. Okay, 
Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. No. That's Emerson. We're actually making some progress with him, I'm happy to say. He works on video games. Ooh, yeah. It's ah. trash, of yeah. course, yeah. but it does I'll involve some the small head. creative effort, which makes him receptive to my therapeutic methods. No kidding. This is literally a loony house. Like, I do not belong here. Now, you might have noticed the typewriter in your room. You've been writing as a part of the therapy. As soon as you feel up to it, you should continue. My rheumatism's killing me. There's a storm coming. Oh, what a storm! I hope it wipes this place off the face of the earth. And these two are the Anderson brothers, Odin and Tor. They had a... how should I put this? A heavy metal band in the 70s and 80s called Old Gods of Asgard. They even adopted new first names to complete the image of Viking gods. After the band broke up, they lived on a farm nearby. They are, well, in advanced stages of dementia. They're well cared for, TLC and all that. There's nothing more that can be done. I'm afraid that the rock and roll lifestyle has left its mark. It's funny. Old Gads of Asgard is like a band that was... So sorry to they, like, do a bunch of music now, for this game. Power has been acting up. I'd better go check on it. We'll continue this soon. Meanwhile, when you feel up to it, return to your room and try to write. It really is for the best. Don't you think? I'd like to bash his head in with a hammer. Oh, he'd love to fish out our secrets, but he has no clue. He's not crazy enough. <laughs> not crazy like us, Sonny. Yeah! Being crazy is a requirement, Sonny. Who else could understand the world when it's like this? It takes crazy to know crazy. That's the sanest thing I've heard in a while. <laughs> Zane, you're all right, Tom. Hey, we like him, don't we, bro? He's got to go to the farm. The Anderson Farm. Valhalla! We wrote it all down, lest we to forget. A crash course. All you need to know to get your head right. You need to find the message. Here, Sonny, here's something for you. Gave me a rash, but I kept it safe from these bastards. Manuscript page it is. Zane could feel the poems taking form, shaping things. As he experimented, he imagined he could almost feel the power surging through the keys of the typewriter. It exhilarated him. But there was fear, too. If not for his young assistant, Emil, he would have given it up. But Emil convinced him otherwise. He, too, had a way with words. My head was clearing up. Or, according to Hartman, I was sinking back into the fantasy. I was convinced he was lying to me about everything. Crazy or not, the Andersons made more sense. Tom, got any booze on you? Get on him now. Yeah, good thing he's not overreacting or anything. Well, he's the boss. I may need a hand here later on, Birch. The storm's bound to make you know who jumpy. You know how they get. Gotcha. Doc's got me looking after Wade here, but holler if it's something's around. wrong. I'll do that. I'm not myself. It's hard to think that there's a shadow inside my head. I can only focus on writing. Everything else is a blur. I'm trapped in this cabin. Have been for days, but it's always dark outside. My editor is real. I saw her again. She's not human. It's not human. A dark presence is wearing the old woman's face. She was covered in clinging shadows. There's a hole in her chest where her heart should be. I think I've made a horrible mistake. I don't think I'm any closer to saving Alice. It's been lying to me, using me to get the story it wants, and the story will come true. 
Hartman had mentioned that the power had been acting up. Maybe that was the reason for the generator and the work light on the balcony. The generator hadn't been activated, and there was no key. Oh, QR code. See one in the last chapter. All right, hang on a second. Let me get the phone out. Hartman wanted me to write. I knew I couldn't. All right, here we go. This one is, is it three or did I miss one? About to find out. Vision three, nice. My morning forest, the colors of the fall, the mist, a caldera lake, Silence echoes, loud. It's too late to hear the words. The man, naked, crawls to the shore, like a birth. To say that would be a lie, nothing like a birth. The opposite, he staggers to his feet. A carcass of a deer lies on the shore, rotting amidst driftwood. The man is afraid. Beside himself. Who is he? He doesn't himself know. Dark waves have washed it away. A blank page where this horror story will be written. He remembers darkness. Feels the shadow pressing down on him. Coming after him. He must get away. He runs to the forest. To a fate worse than death. Creepy. But I figured I should just play along for now. It was the only thing I could do with Nurse Birch watching me like a hawk. Hey, wake. Why don't you humor Dr. Hartman and give the writing a shot, huh? Typewriter's in your room. You can get to your room by those stairs, wake. Wait. Oh, I'm ready. The white glare of the blank page in front of me hurt my eyes. My hands began to shake uncontrollably. Hey, wake. You stay here. I'm gonna go see what's up. You just keep doing what you're doing. Be cool, okay? Chaos was all about, but it could be my only chance of getting out of here. Where the hell did he get a damn hammer? I don't know. Hammer's up. Here's a friendly poke from the old near witch. Oh, afraid of the. Hartman kept talking, giving Barry the grand tour, clearly proud of the place. He went on and on about his hunting trophies, and Barry was impressed. But he was here on business. He raised his voice, cut through the monologue. Hey, Hartman, where's Al? Hartman stopped in mid-sentence, annoyed at the interruption. He nodded at the hulking orderly standing nearby. The man smiled and clapped a practiced hand on Barry's shoulder. Crazy brothers, are ya? Not so weak now, are we? God, dude. Claire looked bad. Well, things were well unraveling fast, the crazy old fart hit her hard. <laughs> If she was one of Hartman's goons, she had it coming. I had to get the to Hartman's office. He had taken all my job. manuscript pages. That's where they're keeping them. It's my store. I'm taking it. We're on a comeback tour, baby. Come out and face the music, Birch. It's time to pay the piper. Hammer's way will have its say. Rise up in their name. The photo on the wall caught my attention. In it, the clinic staff was standing outside the lodge. Oh, I shit. I knew the man next to Hartman. He was the kidnapper. 
Hartman had been playing me all along. The markings on the tape said they were recordings Hartman had made at the sessions with his patients. I saw Alice's name on one of them. For a moment, I couldn't believe it. Pictures are creepy. Hartman wasn't happy. Mott could see it in his eyes. He quickly lowered his own. He had made a mess of it, and he knew it. The shame of failure was hard to bear. He hadn't expected Wake to say he needed more time. And he blurted out two days, less than Wake had asked for to show him who was in charge. But that wasn't part of Hartman's plan. Oh shit, yeah, so Hartman, 100% Hartman's been playing us. Hartman's office. It's right here. Yeah, we got it. These were all the pages I had on me. And more. Alan, please. You're sliding back into the Tell me one more lie and I'll shoot you in the face. Ah, well, it was worth a shot. Really, Wake, come on. Let's work together on this. You have no idea. Hartman, shut up. Barry, get out of here. I'll catch up with you. Get a car. Oh, Al, let's just go. Wake, listen to me. This is a mistake. Don't you see? Together, we can create something absolutely wonderful with your ability and mine. Did he just, did he run and then close the door and lock him in with the darkness? I think so. Yeah, he did. Okay. Whoa, whoa, what the fuck? on that. Oh, hang on. 
Hartman followed the fall of Alan Wake with his binoculars. When the rider hit the water, he ordered Jack to take the boat to him. The spot was easy to see in the dark, even with all the extra lights in the boat. The flare floated and kept burning, even in the water. Jack turned the radio louder as the engine sputtered. The music was rough and clanking, something the Anderson brothers... Hartman knew he was no creator. He had no ambitions on that front, and he certainly didn't want to end up like every artist he had worked with here, damaged in ways that were hard to describe, or worse. It was enough for Hartman to maintain creative control and provide direction, to be a producer. That was what most of these people were in need of anyway. Of course, suitable subjects were few and far in between. Gonna blast open the door. I think it is. And then I probably need to hide in here and let it pass. Come on, you know you want me. Damn it, still fucking hit me. I gotta go. Wake, don't get hit. Oh my god. Ah, oh, no! And I pinch past it? No, I can't. Damn it. I had the right idea. I just, just poor execution. When it first breaks open the doors, I may be able to just run straight through. Oh. Thanks, idiot. Oh, oh, hedge Barry, maze, I nice. Don't have a light. Take this, Al. Oh God! Look at the house, Al. Look out! So did he just keep me sedated all this time? And I guess that's why the darkness wasn't coming. To the shitty maze at. Oh, okay. All right. Stick to the right. Follow the path. We will get out. Viking paraphernalia that littered the area, surrounding an unlikely centerpiece. A full-size stage complete with an impressive sound system with all the trimmings, including a dragon. It took a special kind of crazy to build something like this in a remote field. When the sky split open with a deafening boom and the music started blasting, it felt strangely appropriate. From what I heard from the... Um like the PR sheet at least, supposedly the old guards of Asgard stuff that starts playing, that's copyright free, so I actually get some music.
get two pills in the morning, and then you'll be nice and cold. <laughs> Fuck man, there's birds too. Birds, bro, suck my ass. We don't want any fighting at all. I was just about to win that. You get two pounds in the morning, and then you Let me just actually I'm gonna push this dude into the corner with the, the flare. Come on back. Come back. Yes. Something beefy. Mott knew that Wake was smarter than him. Wake had more money, a beautiful wife, everything. And Hartman said Wake was important. That made him better than Mott. But Mott was calling the shots now. He'd expected Wake to whimper and grovel, but instead, he seemed willing to fight. Mott knew he'd gotten under Wake's skin. If only Mott actually had his wife. The thought made him shiver. Does Mott some weird... Herbert. All right, what are we up against? Show me the big boy. Come on. Ah. This one, it seems. Wish I had kept that flare instead of shooting it at the birds. Got no 
flares, right? Yeah. came into the studio trying to get him to lay down because the cat's staring at him and growling and the puppy is like what do I do and I'm like no we're not last thing I need is a freaking cat dog fight in the middle of a, an episode in the background for the moment Barry was just glad he had survived the fall he had been separated from Al and there was no easy way to climb back up. He told himself he'd be okay, okay in the gloomy forest at night. He would just have to wait for a while for Al to find his way down. Barry turned when he heard the heavy footsteps and saw the movement. The man-shaped shadow lunged at him from the bushes, an ax held high. Barry screamed and threw up his hand. The world exploded. Revolver, and I got one flare. Or cash. God, y'all yo, need to get off of my dick. There's like a flare gun or something in there. Yes, dude. Oh, that'll be so helpful. Next time uh, a gate wants to attack me or some bullshit like that, I can just flare gun it now. Pistol for the regular dude, shotty for the big dudes. And one flare in case I start getting swarmed. Big fight coming up. They're loading me up on, on stuff. Hartman watched as Wake's features slackened. The man was bullheaded, no doubt. Even lying on the bed, he'd almost broken Hartman's nose the second time. But with a little time, he could break Wake down, give him proper direction. Wake was easily the most promising subject he'd had. Well, since Tom, really. Sleep well, Alan, Hartman whispered with a smile. Let me take care of you. He sniffed hard to clear his throbbing nose, swallowed blood, and barely tasted it. I kind of already see the silhouette. Oh, no, it's Barry. Alright, well since we have found Barry, let's go ahead and wrap things up here. Um, definitely way over uh, how long I typically go for an episode, but you know, we just kept pushing and pushing and pushing. So either way, closing things on out and I will catch you all with more soon.